the AMRA WA presentation, the first Monday of the month, 6th of the 2nd, 2023. This is a Railways Electric Branch Line presentation, and this talk is given by Bill Pickering, member 8153. What we're talking about is the New South Wales Government Railway Class 38 and the new ARM 3801 Streamliner that is now available for $300. The C38 class was a class of steam locomotives built for the New South Wales Government in May 1939. An order for five 38 class locomotives was placed with Clyde engineering. There were many delays during construction, primarily due to shortages caused by World War II. The first five locomotives were built by Clyde and had a streamlined boiler casing. However, this design, with this design, the firemen could not maintain the steam at 245 psi, the highest boiler pressure at that time in Australia. In early trials on the Southern Line, the 3801, the class leader, was allocated to firemen because of this fault. However, the fault was located with the shape of the blast pipe, and uh, this prevented steam passing optimally into the outlet pipe and up the chimney, which it was going to be ejected into the atmosphere. In turn, this reduced the suction of the hot gases through the boiler tubes, making it more demanding to fire the locomotive. Eventually this was fixed, and as all, we all know, it left it with a clean bark on its exhaust. Okay, the model that I've chosen is my first attempt at an HO model. The ARM loco details is much better than the old Lima model, but I was disappointed that the headlight was just purely decorative. And it would have looked better if it was lit, but more on this later. There were some inaccuracies and some finer details that could have been better. This <coughs> loco did survive running in with no bits falling off. And that's because some Chinese manufacturers, as we all know, use spit instead of glue. Here's a list of the costs, and they weren't unsubstantial when you look at it, but we've got a loco that's got sound, lights, extra pickups, so I personally think it was worth the effort. The assembly of the loco. At the rear of the loco is two screws that hold the back body casing on. Remove these first. At the front, there's a screw holds the pony truck on. It's only a small screw. This needs to be removed to get access to the front screw. However, when you come to put this back, you will need a small magnetic screwdriver to hold the screw in place to put the pony truck back. I spent many, many minutes trying to fit this back on. And finally, the front screw. Undo the front screw and with a little persuasion, gently rock the body from side to side and it will lift off. And sure enough, here's the locomotive with its eight pin decoder socket in all the glory without a close. Please note, if you're putting a sound decoder in or any decoder at this stage, Remember to move, remove the um, capacitor that's soldered to the motor that I have highlighted. Fitting the ESU sound decoder. No, on this model, we've got two speakers. You can just see the rear speaker under the flywheel. And at the front there, you can see the main speaker that will eventually go into the smoke box with a little care. It 
If you're attempting the head light modification like myself, you'll need to move the body shell weight backwards. Or in the case of the 3840, we'll have to remove the front smoke box completely. You'll notice I've shown here the body weight and there's two little tr trims inside the locomotive body shell. If you trim them off with a knife, it will allow the weight to come further back and give you more clearance room at the front if you're dr drilling through a three mil hole for the headlight. This is the 3830 with the smoke box door removed. This is only required if you need to fit the large speaker because the other speaker I was able to just feed it from the other end. But remember, if you're putting a light in both these models to include a 1K resistor that connects to the white and blue lead on the decoder. Okay, this is a modification for the three millimeter lead. You notice that I've filed the front of the lead down and I've filed the uh, back uh, collar down so it can be fed in through from the front. Um, and in this case, I used the bondic glue to glue it in place because with the UV light, it only took four seconds to bond. But you could use super glue if you were careful. Here's the bondic glue. Um, OK, you can buy it with a bonus refill. From the uh, place listed below for thirty nine dollars, but we actually bought ours for twelve dollars from Aldi on an Aldi special. So sometimes it's worth just keeping your eye out for those Aldi specials. Again, here's the fiber optics. These are for the marker lights or the ditch lights. And as you can see, I've glued it to another three mil white light. The bonded glue goes off in four seconds. It's a nightmare to hold these fibers in place with super glue that might take up to a minute to a minute and a half to go off. Uh, the bondic was off in four seconds, so it's well worth getting a little bit of bondic, even if you're using it in future for quick repairs. I've shown here how I've uh, assembled the fibers onto the lead with the resistor in line and covered it up with some shrink sleeving. And as you can see on the left, you can get 30 foot for five dollars and four cents plus postage if you want to buy some better high grade fiber i use some off a christmas tree that was donated to me and here's the finished loco as you can see we've got the headlight working and the two uh, marker lights lit uh, the same can be done on the um, 3830 OK, the control P kit is a um, 3D printed bogey chassis um, with separate bogies as the original one has fixed bogies and may not um, or may have problems going around tight corners. I didn't find that, but it, again, it's worth considering. OK, we see the locomotive upside down now and I've soldered two wires onto the pickups. You've got to take the bottom cover plate off to access these two connections. And while you're there, it would pay actually to make sure that the pickups are touching the back of the wheels. In my case, they were not on all the wheels, so they just needed lifting up a little bit and a slight outward pressure to make sure that they contacted with the wheels. When they were all soldered on and the wires were run back, I then put the cover back on, but I had to file two little V's to allow the cables to come out from under the cover to go to the tender. I've connected the tender to the locomotive 
with a screw instead of the peg that was fitted to original tender. So I don't require a plug and socket. As you can see, um, it's quite tidy. At this stage, I'm just waiting for the phosphor bronze wire so I can put extra pickups on the tender. Fitting the 3D printed chassis and bogey. You'll have to transfer, have to transfer the original weights out of the original tender body into the new um, 3D printed body, but I guess that's fairly obvious. As you can see, I've glued two small pieces of circuit, single sided circuit board down. I also had to make sure that the wheels, because they're only insulated on one side, and in my case, they were a bit of a jumble. They went from side to side. They weren't shown as I've marked in yellow. So just make sure that you've got them all the right way. Otherwise, you'll create a short when you connect up the phosphor on wires. Okay, at this stage, we're still waiting for the phosphor on pickup. So I've marked where they're going in red. Uh, once they soldered on um, and it was it was fortunate really because you'll see in the next slide even with them on because they're so fine you can all, almost not see them so just be aware I've shown them in red is where you will need to solder the wires uh, the phosphor bronze wire and underneath the axles here I decided to put two extra pickups to take them into the tender to give rear lights for the tender. However, I nearly had a catastrophe here. The 3D printed tender doesn't like being drilled into and did crack the body, which I have I have glued and put the weights in place. If you're looking at doing this, I would suggest you create this hole, a small hole, with maybe a hot tip of a soldering iron. Um, rather than use a drill to do this work. Here again, I've shown you the circuit diagram that I created for you to uh, wire up the rear lights on the tender. But this circuit could also be used on coach lighting. So in my case, I really didn't need the 5K variable resistor. Uh, the 1K resistors in each leg were more than enough to have the correct brightness, but it's purely up to yourself. I would suggest you use the uh, variable resistor. It's only a small, tiny resistor if you're going to use this circuit in coach lighting because uh, you can get the correct uh, level of lighting by using that. Here we're looking at the underside of the tender and you can see my poor attempt at soldering the lights together with a stay alive, which is basically a capacitor. So you don't get any flickering. Uh, it did look quite good once it was running. Here from the rear, you can see the um, tender lights lit. And they work, of course, both on DC and DCC. They are not connected up to the decoder because I didn't want to run another pair of wires up to the yellow and uh, blue to just turn the rear lights on. And of course here where we come to the horrible coal load, it looks terrible. So we'll have to have a go at doing something about this. And here we go, we've used some good New South Wales coal genuine coal. They're a little large, but no doubt the fireman will break them up before he puts it into the boiler. But you've got to admit, it looks a lot better than it did before. And here's the finished locomotives uh, with the lights lit and the marker lights on. I think it turned out okay. It's up for you to judge that for yourself. And of course, here she is in all the glory. 
and doesn't she look beautiful? The last time I saw her here in Western Australia was in 1988. And at least we've got a beautiful heritage motor, uh, <clears throat> locomotive that we will have for, from now on. Okay, that's the end of the presentation for the modifications of 3801. If you've got any questions, contact me at the club. And of course, when buying new locos, beware of the model train detector that your wife has waiting at the door. Well, I guess that's all, folks. Hope you enjoyed.